<laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Welcome to the Calvin Dean Show Fantasy Football Edition. Week four is upon us, guys. And man, I got some great stuff for you guys. Let's just go over the NFL quickly. Uh, Austin Eckler, uh, guys, if you have Austin Eckler on your team, he is incredibly doubtful. He had a high ankle sprain, guys, and uh, that just takes such a long, long time. It just, I'm sorry, guys, it just does. Um, I, I remember when I had one, uh, it, it lasted over a year. I mean, I was never the same. It, it High ankle sprains, actually, they're worse than a break. If you break your ankle, literally, when I came back with a broken ankle after my cast was off, I came back um, and started practicing in three weeks after my cast was off. So um, the high ankle sprains are completely different. Took me right out of the game, that's for sure. And uh, Austin Eckler does not look like he's going to be playing this weekend. Uh, the Niners wideout Debo Samuels is questionable against the Cardinals at home. Uh, he hasn't practiced all week, guys. So, uh, hey, congratulations to Mar Hamlin. Uh, he is expected to be active this Sunday uh, after suffering uh, his cardiac arrest on the field against the Bengals. Uh, man, whew, wow. Is that a Cinderella story or what, huh, guys? Wow. I uh, can't wait to see him on the field, but he, he's going to be facing the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> what a time to come back, right? And, uh, hey, guess what? The NFL is reinstating Lions wideout Jamison Williams and Titans offensive lineman Nichols, Nicholas um, Peter Fair effective Monday due to gambling policies. So uh, I guess there is a uh, the players... Um, association and the league came up with rules about uh, new rules uh, about uh, gambling and that's the reason why both of their um, suspensions were reduced because they came up to an agreement the league and the uh, the players union so hats off to them just thank Jameson Williams <laughs> And the Lions, they have, they're have going to have more firepower. You talk about deep threat. Man, guys, if you are um, a fantasy lover like myself, all you fantasy nuts out there, go get him, get him, get him. If he is on, I don't think he, I think people have him. If they don't, they're stupid. I mean, I go to a league and I went to a league last night. I'm in 60 leagues. And, uh... <laughs> like five of the leagues didn't have him on their team. I, I grabbed him in a second. He is a deep threat. He's he's like a, um, uh, a Tyreek Hill. Seriously, he's that good. He's that good. And watch the Lions. Oh, my God. Just think of the firepower. They have the run. They have the pass. They they got a, a, a great tight end now in Laputa. And uh, it... St. Brown and Raymond and Reynolds and now Jameson Williams. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I could go on and on. And uh, the running backs are just Jameer Gibbs. And it's just, uh, it's just, it's just, they're all, they're stacked, guys. They're just stacked. I mean, I just can't believe it. They look great against the uh, um, Packers, didn't they? I mean, seriously, when the Lions picked up, uh, you know, well, they got rid of Williams, right? And um, then they picked up David Montgomery from the Bears. Wow. I mean, you know, he surely shined the other night against uh, the Packers. I, I predicted that game. I said that the, the Lions would win. And... Um, they just looked all world, didn't they? Oh my God, their defense was just amazing. Their offense is great. I love how Jared Goff just came back after his interception um, and the first the first drive of the game. He he had his ball intercepted, but then he just came back and drove the ball down the field. Didn't care. Was thrown in tight windows and 
I mean, Jared Goff is all that, guys. He's He already took a team to the Super Bowl, right? So think about it, guys. I, He's, he's, he's definitely, um, everyone, you know, they're, they're, I don't know why people aren't high on Jared Goff. I just don't see, he's really good. He's really, really good. And I just, it's, it's funny. It's funny how people, uh, you know, a lot of analysts, you know, they, they bag on him. I have no idea why they're bagging on Jared Goff. I just don't know why. Anyway, uh, back to the league. Uh, hey, the Rams signed uh, Tyler Higby, their tight end, to a two-year deal, twenty-seven million dollars extension. Wow, extends it up to two thousand twenty-five. How about that, huh? And then, uh, unfortunately, Las Vegas Raiders defensive end Chandler Jones was ar- arrested on two counts of violation of domestic violence protection order. He's just all screwed up. I mean, was arrested, was in the hospital. Something's going on with him. Uh, And he's how old? You know, he's past his prime. And uh, he's just, you know, he's a mess. He's a mess, you know, just a mess. And let's just go back. Let's get to it, guys. I just would love to uh, just look at fantasy football and um, you lovers out there. And uh, it's it's time. I think it's time for our fantasy football Saturday. And um, let's just get to it, really, you know. Um, and number one, still, got to start this guy, must start, is Raheem Mozart. I mean, I think the Buffalo Bills are going to take uh, the pass, try to take the pass out of the hands of Tua. But then you have Mozart, and the the guy is just, I mean, he's actually 31 years old, veteran speedster, has proven that his age really is just not, it's just a number. You know, his jersey number is 31. You know, in fact, he posted, he is the third fastest top speed baller he's at 21.62 miles per hour this season third fastest ever recorded and that's their running back doesn't include the cheetah you know or waddle i mean their team is stacked stacked with talent you know just you know i he's just he's he's just amazing it hasn't. He's never finished the season as a number one overall running back. And it's because his injuries, injuries. Uh, he's rarely cracked up the top ten in a position, you know. But he is definitely, um, you know, top ten, top five right now in running backs in the NFL. So, guys, start, 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 start him, and then, and then, <laughs> and then you have Devon. A chain. I mean, I mean, the guy is just, he's just, he's amazing. Four touchdowns last week. I mean, the guy is 4-3 in the, in the 40. Uh, you know, I'm telling you something. This, this kid is for real. For real. And have both of them. If you would have both of them on your, on your fantasy football last week, you, you would have won huge. And I, I know I did. I had both of them. I think one guy, you know, he IM me. You know, he was playing. I was playing him, and literally, they both scored like eighty points together. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Uh, you know, his uh, Raheem Moser's fantasy points against the Broncos was like forty-five points, guys. <laughs> Just. Oh man, I mean, really think about that. I just and both those guys in Miami's just a, they're studs. They're studs, guys. Um, I just don't see Buffalo beating them this this weekend. I called Miami, and uh, I, Buffalo's favored too. <sighs> I shake my head on that one. That's for sure. The next person you should be starting would be C.J. Stroud. He is just he's been. I mean, he's definitely doing it. The Texans have rallied heavily on the second overall pick, draft pick, um, as they recorded the 
second largest gap between passing yards and rushing yards in the NFL this season. Stroud had 302 yards passing per game. Per game. As a rookie. <laughs> for And uh, would be ranked. In, I mean, and, uh, you know, he's uh, ranked uh, right behind Patrick Mahomes in 2022. I mean, come on. I mean, C.J. Stroud, I, I told everyone, when they took um, Bryce Young, uh, and I, I just, I said to myself, C.J. Stroud, take C.J. Stroud. He's, he's I think he's, he's, he's just bigger, taller. He's more of a NFL quarterback, and he is really good, you know. He has some rare um, ability, support. I mean, guys, fantasy lovers, you know, take him. You know, no rookie quarterback has produced a top 20 fantasy receiver since Justin Haber aided Keelan Allen in 2020, right? Though uh, week three, Stroud is supporting two, Tank Dell, wideout, and Nick Collins. Um, and those are two wideouts. They're, you don't actually know who they are because they're not household names. Tank Dell and Nick Collins. Pick them up. Those are sleepers, guys. Sleepers, sleepers, and sleepers. Yeah, definitely start them. I mean, this this kid is for real. The kid is for real. The next person, next person up, Mike Williams tore his ACL out for the season. So it's always next person up, right? Now, they did invest heavily on Quinton Johnson, the... Uh, Los Angeles Chargers. Mike Williams, of course, tore his ACL. It sucks. They have Duke, have Keenan Allen. But the next player up that I think everyone should go get is Josh Palmer. And once again, you know, he's going to dominate um, the, the lineup. Uh, Josh will. And uh, he did this last time. And uh, many fantasy managers are deciding whether to invest in Palmer or the w- rookie Quinton Johnson. <sighs> you know, the, the the rookies, he was having a tough, Johnson was having a tough um, preseason. He was dropping a lot of balls, you know. Palmer recorded 16 fantasy points per game uh, last year. And, um, you know, that's when uh, they needed him, you know. I tell you something, guys. Uh, you know, Palmer is, is he's, a, he's definitely the front runner for now. Definitely the front runner, John. Uh, uh, don't be surprised if Johnston, uh, the 21st overall pick in April's draft, quickly ascends to in a value on the offense of ranks for the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, so just just take that into account. I probably would go out and get Quinton, uh, but definitely get Josh Palmer. Uh, the, now, the the running back you should be starting this weekend, start, 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 is Tony Pollard of the Cowboys. The only thing more valuable than targets for fantasy running backs are gold line carries on an average, right? A carry inside the five-yard line would worth three points, was was worth three points in 2022, right? Uh, 23, it's it's worth higher. Um, the goal line uh, leaders are tiered um, only uh, for running backs. Um, I think you know, um, you know, when uh, a team has the ball and they run the ball into uh, the end zone, I'm telling you, it's demoralizing for defenses. And um, you know, defenses hate that. They don't care if. It's weird. Uh, if you're in the red zone and you score, you know, running the ball, uh, it, the defense is humiliated. But then, uh, you know, they, um, it's weird. I don't know, understand that, but, you know, it's definitely weird. Uh, I've never been a defensive player, so I wouldn't understand. Uh, now, Tony Pollard is ranked eighth in, in uh, goal line. You know, and then Kenneth Walker's seventh. So, I mean, if you have those two, definitely, definitely start them, start them. Uh, but, you know, don't forget, 
don't forget Josh Jacobs and Alexander Madison. Um, you know, they, they'll they most likely have a big game this weekend, too. So if you have Pollard, Kenneth Walker, Josh Jacobs, or Madison, start them. Madison. Now, Cam Akers went over to uh, Minnesota. Mm, I'm not a big Cam Akers fan, so I don't think he's going to ruffle, I think he's going to ruffle feathers, <laughs> but I don't think he's going to do much of anything other than that. Um, I don't know. I just, Cam Akers is just a head case. Uh, now, on the flip side, managers of Christian McCaffrey, Bijan Robinson, James Cook, and Rasheem Stevenson might be, have cause for worry. These players have just won a piece, like one you know, touchdown in, in, uh, that, that five yard line. So, but you know, I wouldn't be wor- too worried about Christian McCaffrey. The guy just scores heavily all the time. And, um, they could have zero touchdowns within the five yard line, like, um, Etienne and, uh, Nasheed Harris, Nasheed Harris. Can you believe it? And Brees Hall. I, I, I can't believe Nasheed Harris, you know, how could, I, I don't understand that. I, you know, he's such a big, burly back. I can't believe he doesn't have, he has zero touchdowns inside the five-yard line. Julian Hurts, by the way, has four goal line carries. <laughs> Tied with third most in the NFL, regardless of the position. I, I Jalen Hurts, come on. He's, 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 he's one-dimensional. We get him inside that five-yard line, they do the whole rugby thing, and it's a touchdown. Easy. Easy, guys. Easy. You know, now, the starts for your wide receivers, okay? Now, when it comes to touchdowns, there's nothing guaranteed, especially for wide receivers. Uh, With an increase of of value of fantasy success outside the end zone, there are uh, a few wideouts, I think, that are studs, you know, uh, non-touchdown production. C.D. Lamb. One of them. Uh, he's a wideout 18 on the season, but becomes a wideout 9 if touchdowns are neutralized. You know, so, and same with Jamar Chase. Also moves up 9 spots in this experiment of to wideout 16. Can you believe that? Jamar Chase, 16. Burroughs is having a terrible year. Uh, it's his calf. I told everyone. I told everyone. Jonathan Morales. Got to listen to the show, brother. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't see, uh, you know, Burroughs getting, I don't think he should be playing through his calf injury. I think he should be out and then come back in full tilt because he doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Um, now, uh, AJ Brown, um, you know, he's another one that's just not scoring touchdowns. You know, the once Buckeyes now Saint receiver, uh, Michael Thomas, uh, you know, um, he, he would be, um, he would go from wide out 41 to 25, um, you know, touchdown wise, you know, while, and while, um, Chris Olave is already at um, wide out 12, right. And, and he would break the top seven and score some touchdowns, you know, but I don't know if, um, Carr is going to be back this weekend. So if you have Derek Carr, I would not start him. I don't know if he's going to even play, guys. Uh, man, I mean, there's so much stuff here. I mean, I think about this. A good example would be Romeo Dobbs, who drops nearly 20 spots from wideout 28 to wideout 47, right? And, um, and <laughs> lastly, though, that he's already a wideout 6 on the season, Puka Nokua has positive regression coming up. I, I, you know, he's just, he's, it's funny. He just, he was amazing. And then he, you know, receiving touchdowns on the league's leading 42 targets is a uh, definition of uh, an outlayer data. He, he'll, he'll score soon. He's going to score soon. Um, just, you know, I, I don't know about him um, when, uh, Cooper Cup comes back. I, I think he'll be non-existent, uh, or maybe just help out. Who knows? Uh, now, uh, Keenan Allen. All right, who's going to attract twenty targets this week? Who? Who do you think? I, 
Uh, I think Keenan Allen's going to. Um, you know, I think he's going to be all that and then some. You know, with Williams out, Palmer's going to be in. Quinton Williams, Quinton Johnson, Johnston, excuse me. Um, you know, Jeff, uh, I think, can start Keenan Allen, that's for sure, and Devontae Adams as well. Uh, Devontae will always get his numbers. Always get his numbers, guys. You know, and, um, and make sure you start Tyler Lockett as well. You know, Tyler Lockett, he's going to have a huge game. So, you know, just make sure um, those guys are starting on your lineup this weekend. Like I said, Tyler Lockett, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Puka Nakua. Uh, oh, I, hopefully I'm not destroying his name. Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, I, A.J. Brown, um, you know, you could start him. Um, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase will have a good game. Uh, of course, uh, Jalen Hurts, you know, that's a given. ETN out in um, London, uh, he might have a huge game. Christian McCaffrey, uh, you know, th- those Arizona Cardinals, they play tough, but start Christian, of course. Never never sit down Christian. Bijan Robinson, he might have a good game in London. That's going to be a fun game to watch that's tomorrow at 6 30 a.m pacific standard time that's 9 30 a.m eastern standard time and it's on espn 2 and it's the london game between the atlanta falcons and jacksonville jaguars so i it's it's funny some teams don't travel well and some teams do and um i just they don't i you know it's it's so hard to predict which team's going to win and lose in London because, like I said, who knows who, which team's going to travel well, you know. Make sure C.J. Stroud is on your team. Of course, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Haybear, all the names. But, the you know, the sleepers will be Tank Dell and Nico Collins with C.J. Stroud throwing to them. Uh, Devon Ashain of the ba- Miami Dolphins, got to pick him up, guys. Got to pick him up. A lot of teams, a lot of, I mean, I picked him up. I have, like I said, I have 60 teams. And uh, I think I picked up a Shane on, I think I was like, I was happy to pick him up on like 12 of my teams out of 12, out of 60. So I was happy of that one. I just also had Mozart on my teams as well. So I was well aware that he was going to be awesome this year. That's for sure. And, um, you know, just the power rankings, uh, you know, of course the Dolphins are our number one spot. You know, they definitely are, you know, and they're just, wow. You know, the Miami Dolphins and the power rankings, I number two would be the San Francisco 49ers. Um, you know, the Giants apparently came into Thursday night's matchup last week intending to blitz the holy heck out of Brock Purdy. And they certainly succeeded in doing that. Purdy was shaky early, but he really adjusted to how quickly the defense was bearing down, making several big-time throws outside the numbers, which was just amazing. Any team looking to mimic the defense approach against the Niners is at risk, and they will be carved up by Mr. Brock Purdy. I I call Brock more of a a Joe Montana type. Uh, Now, even with Brandon Ayuk injured last week, I mean, they still, still look great. Still look great. Um, I, what can you say about the Miami Dolphins? I mean, come on, 70 points? Wow. I mean, that was just, that was a clinic. And they did it with uh, Waddle. Just think, Waddle could have helped them score 80 points. <laughs> the third ranked team I have is the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, you know, um, they rolled over the vulnerable Bears, that's for sure, following week one loss uh, against the meat grinder. Um, but, I mean, Patrick Mahomes definitely dished out the ball. Um, Taylor um, Swift was in, in town, and they, you know, all the love affair with Travis Kelsey. <laughs> I had to mention that. I had to mention that, guys. Anyway, uh, and then the fourth is uh, the... Uh, Buffalo Bills, fifth I give to the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I'm giving the seventh to the, the Detroit Lions. I After last um, Thursday, this last Thursday's game, 
I'm going to put Detroit up. I, I really am. I'm going to put them up on fourth and then put the Bills fifth and then the Eagles sixth, Cowboys seventh, uh, the Browns eighth. I'm going to give the uh, the ninth place would be definitely Baltimore, Cleveland, you know, and then, and then you have, you know, Seattle and, and then – uh, the Bengals are there as well. I don't see the Packers um, in the, the top, maybe 15th. I see the Chargers around 12th. So, I mean, seriously, the top four, it, I think the Dolphins, 49ers, Chiefs, and I'm bringing the Lions in that fourth. That's the top, my top four in power rankings of the NFL. And um, anyway, guys, it's been fun. Listen to my show for all the, the scores, uh, the predictions. Uh, I had great stuff last week. Uh, my, my lock of the week was, was right on. Usually I'm like 90, 95% of my locks. And uh, this week is the same. And just listen to my show. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Uh, This is Kelvin signing out. Fantasy Football Roundup. All right, guys. Thank you.